Today on Let the Bible Speak. For some who lived in Jesus' day, coming face to face with the Lord was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's a precious opportunity for you and me as well. Good morning. Welcome to Let the Bible Speak, a time together to open the Word of God and let it speak about the issues of our day and of our individual lives. I hope you had a good week, and I'm so glad you're starting a new one by joining us to investigate the Scriptures. Today I want us to go back to a familiar day in the life of Jesus, the day Jesus met two very memorable men, one by the side of the road and the other, well, up in a tree. I'm talking, of course, about Bartimaeus and Zacchaeus. We know Bartimaeus as the poor blind man who sat on the side of the road begging. Zacchaeus, on the other hand, was famous, first of all, because of his stature, but he was also infamous because of his occupation, because he was a hated tax collector. But both men had life-changing encounters with Christ the day he came to the city of Jericho. Let's read first from Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 35. Then it happened, as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And the record goes on to tell of how Jesus healed him. Now continuing in chapter 19 and verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him today, Salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost." Now, both of these men had something in common. One was rich, one was poor, but Jesus came by both of them. And they were both where they needed to be when Jesus passed by. I want us to consider that phrase today because it's rich with meaning not only for them, but for us. Our sermon today, Jesus Passed By, after a song from the congregation. Let the Lord be praised, O Zion, The ministry of Jesus was coming to a close. He was slowly making his way to Jerusalem for the final time where the cross awaited him. He had spent three and a half years now walking the dusty roads of Galilee and of Samaria and Judea, preaching the gospel of the coming kingdom, 
healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the mute, and even raising up the dead. His teachings had piqued interest, sparked hope, and stirred controversy. His miracles had attracted a great following, even if many of those who followed him were only interested in seeing the miracles. By this time he was well known among his people, and so wherever he went it caused a great commotion. His journey to the Mount of Olives and his final descent in Jer into Jerusalem for the Passion Week took him through the town of Jericho. Now when you piece together the accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it appears to have unfolded like this. Jesus was coming up from the Jordan Valley, and he approached the town of Jericho at the eastern gate. And somewhere outside the city there sat pitiful Bartimaeus. He was blind and he was poor, and he sat by the roadside begging. As usual, a crowd followed Jesus, and after Jesus walked by, the blind man could hear all of the commotion of the multitude. And so he asked someone what all the fuss was about, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Well, I imagine his heart fluttered in his chest when they told him that because he had apparently heard of Jesus. I know that because he knew who Jesus claimed to be, and he apparently believed it. He had probably heard about all of the miracles that Jesus had performed, and therefore concluded that Jesus was the promised one, the Messiah. And maybe he sat there day by day just waiting for the day that Jesus would come passing through Jericho and maybe he would have his opportunity to encounter the Christ and be healed himself. And so how excited he must have been to hear that Jesus had passed that way. And so he immediately starts to find a way to intercept Jesus as he journeyed about the city. He probably knew that Jesus was headed to Jerusalem for the Passover, and so therefore maybe he concluded that Jesus would leave through the southern gate. And so I imagine that he groped his way along the wall of the city to position himself where he could meet the Lord when he departed. Meanwhile, Jesus entered Jericho. He passed through the town, and there was another man who got caught up in all of the commotion. He saw that Jesus was passing that way, and he wanted to see him and find out more about him. He was determined to get near Jesus and to catch a glimpse. His name was Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus, you probably remember, was a very short man. That's one of the great things he's known for. He couldn't see over the crowd, and so he famously climbed up into the branches of a sycamore tree to catch a glimpse of Jesus as he passed by. Now not only was Zacchaeus vertically challenged, but Zacchaeus also had another problem, and that was that People in the town despised him because he was a tax collector. In other words, he was a Jew working for the Roman government, collecting taxes. And tax collectors in that day were known to be less than honest and take up more than was required, and they would line their own pockets. Not only was he a tax collector, he was a chief among the publicans, the Bible says. And these Jews were looked upon as traitors because not only did the Jews resent paying taxes to the occupying Roman government, but they accused these tax collectors of using their position to get rich on their backs. They were, many of them, collecting oppressive amounts of tax and flaunting their luxury before the poor and common people that they were taking from. So whether the accusation was fair or unfair in regard to Zacchaeus, the fact is Zacchaeus was a man under suspicion, and he was a despised man by the people in that city. And so he thinks he could just hide away in the foliage of a sycamore tree and be able to get a look at Jesus as he passed by. And the record says he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. Well, if you know the rest of the story, Jesus did pass under that tree, and he knew Zacchaeus was sitting up there, and he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must stay at your house. And I love what the Bible then says, So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Now, however unscrupulous of a life Zacch Zacchaeus may have lived before then, when Jesus, when Jesus went home with him, his life was radically changed. Salvation came to that house, the Bible says. And you know the same will happen to you when you take Jesus into your home and into your heart and into your life. Your life will be transformed. Your home will be transformed. Your marriage will be transformed. The way you rear your children will be, will be transformed. All will be changed when Jesus goes home with a man or a woman. And life was changed for Zacchaeus that day. All because when the Lord passed by and called for him, 
Zacchaeus seized that precious and rare opportunity, and he made haste and came down and received the Lord joyfully. And so Jesus then makes his way out of the house of Zacchaeus, and again, if you parallel the gospel accounts, it seems as though it happened in this order. He exits the city, perhaps at the southern gate, to leave for Jerusalem, and here this blind beggar Bartimaeus has been waiting for Christ to appear. After he'd heard the commotion of the Lord entering the city, he had groped his way along the city wall to the gate where Jesus would exit, perhaps, and he positions himself to meet the Lord. This was his opportunity. This was his chance. And as Jesus now passes by, Bartimaeus cries out to him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. They didn't think this lowly man had any business calling out and bothering Jesus, but I want you to see his persistence and his faith. I want you to see how pressing of a matter this was to him and how precious he saw this opportunity as Jesus came passing his way. It says, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Now here's a man who realized what a great opportunity presented itself when Jesus passed by. And he called upon his name. He called upon him for help. Friend, this is a principle that's found throughout the Word of God and His dealings with sinful men and women such as you and me. God's grace, as great as it is, has a season. God's mercy is a door that is flung open wide, and it's wide enough for anyone to pass through. But that door is not open forever. It's open just for a while. God's gracious offer of salvation passes our way in our lifetime, but it doesn't remain forever. And we need to be aware of that. In Isaiah chapter 55, the prophet prophesies of Jesus the Messiah, saying that God, through His Son, would extend a glorious invitation to weary, thirsty, hungry, and lost mankind. He words it this way in verse 1, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He says, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Well, that's a gracious invitation. What grace and mercy he would extend to a sinful and undone people as the prophet so beautifully pictures it. But I want you to notice what he then says in verse 6. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now underscore that. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Meaning there will be a time when he will not be found. There will come a time when he will not be near. You see, Jesus passes by, and when He does, that is our opportunity. Some seem to think that Jesus will simply stand aside forever and allow them to live as they please, do as they wish, use their life up for their own selfish purposes, and He'll just patiently wait, and if the time should ever come that they might see some need for Him in their life, then He will be right there. But friend, that's not how it works. That's not the case. God's Word sternly warns us about such an attitude and disposition. God appealed to Israel, His people, for example, to repent of their sinful idolatry long before His judgment actually fell. And Jeremiah wept over their ruined condition. And he made a haunting statement in Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20 when he said, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. The time for preparation was gone. The time for sowing was over. They had let the time for repentance slip away. And now day was done. And he says they were not saved. That's the case for many even today who squander the many opportunities that God and His grace and His mercy and His long-sufferingness provides. In fact, after Jesus left Bartimaeus and Zacchaeus in Jericho, He journeyed the few miles to Jerusalem 
where the cross awaited him. And as Jesus came down the Mount of Olives toward the city, you recall he stopped and he looked out over it. And he envisioned not only the rejection that he knew he would suffer when he entered, culminating in his gruesome death and painful death upon the cross, but he also looked about 40 years into the future and he saw the awful destruction that would befall that city a few years later because of its rejection of him when Titus and the Romans would invade and destroy it. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 beginning in verse 41, Now as he drew near he saw the city and he wept over it. That word wept in the Greek means uh, refers to convulsive sobs. He sobbed as he looked at that city, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within, the, within you to the ground and they will not leave in you one stone upon another." He's talking about what would happen in A.D. 70 when Titus and the Roman army would encircle and besiege the city of Jerusalem and leave it in ruins. He says, that will happen because you did not know the time of your visitation. By that he means you were so blinded and so hardened by your sin and by your pride and by your prejudice that you never realized the door that God opened the opportunity that God put before you, the salvation that He extended to you first, but you've rejected. They had the signs of Jesus. They had the testimony of Jesus. They had the uh, prophets of old prophesying of Jesus. And they had Jesus fulfilling those prophecies before their eyes, but they missed it. It was the day of their visitation. The Messiah had come to them, and they rejected Him, and they crucified Him. He told them, I would have been like a mother hen that gathers her chicks under her wings. I wanted to save you. I wanted to protect you. But then he says, you would not. They let Jesus pass by, you see, without calling upon him, just like many people do in their own lives today. My friend, my friend maybe you're in a lost condition today. Maybe you're that blind beggar, spiritually speaking. Maybe you're like Zacchaeus. And you've lived for gain and wealth and greed. And you're a great sinner in God's eyes. And Jesus is passing by you today. Do you realize that? He may be passing by as you come across a channel like this and hear a gospel sermon. He may be passing by as the sorrows and tragedies or maybe even joys that are taking place in your life now make you stop and think for even just a moment about your soul and spiritual matters. He may be passing by as some loved one or person of influence in your life pleads with you to consider Him. He may be passing by as some sermon, some song, some prayer, some scripture, some word of admonishment touches your heart and tries to point you to Jesus. And you might, like so many, may think, another time, another day, there will be other chances. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. But Jesus passes by. He doesn't stay forever. Doors of opportunity eventually close. I remember hearing a preacher on the radio a few years ago tell a story about preaching to a large congregation one night. A young man was there who was obviously affected by the preacher's sermon. The preacher could tell that young man's conscience was being stirred. He uncomfortably shifted and squirmed in his seat. He looked down at the floor. And when the invitation was finally extended, the young man looked at his songbook and nervously shifted around for a few lines, and he suddenly put down his book and looked as though he was going to step out into the aisle. He stopped, though. The next verse came, and once again he nervously fidgeted and moved as though he had made up his mind and was going to step out, but he didn't. A third time, and this time he stepped out into the aisle, turned around, and ran out the back door and never returned to that place again. Time passed, and that preacher was called to go visit that same young man in the hospital, and he was dying. The preacher reminded him of that service and told him how he had wondered several times what was going through that young, man, young man's mind that day. And the man told him, I was about to go forward. I had struggled with this matter in my heart for a long while, 
And something in your sermon stirred me and made me want to go forward. But he said there was just too much to give up. I just couldn't bring myself to turn my back on the life I had. And I finally decided there was nothing to all of this religion stuff. And despite that preacher's pleas, even in sickness, even in the face of death, that young man could not bring himself to believe. And he went out into eternity without obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. I didn't know that young man. I don't even know who he was. But it would appear to me that Jesus one day passed by. And he looked and he thought, maybe, perhaps, what if? But he didn't. He let Jesus pass on by, and Jesus went his way. He will not force himself on anybody, on you, on me, or anyone. He extends to us in grace the invitation to come and drink the water of life, to come and to find the forgiveness of sins, to be healed of our spiritual sickness, and to be made new and to be made whole in Christ. When he passes by, he's willing to do that for you, and he's willing to do that for me through the power of the gospel. What will you do with that invitation? Will you let him pass by? Or will you in faith and obedience call out to him? The wise man said, He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Proverbs 29 and verse 1. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7. Is Jesus passing by you today? As you pause to listen to this gospel sermon, as perhaps you've listened to many others in the past, or as you find yourself in the place where you're being confronted with questions and anxieties and worries about your spiritual state, I ask, is Jesus passing by? As Jesus told Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, run to meet him. This may well be the most important day of your life, and you may make the most important decision you will ever make in your life because it will determine where you spend eternity. And friend, he may never pass this way again. And if Jesus is passing by, I hope you'll decide to follow him and do whatever you have to do to learn what he wants you to do and how he wants you to live and that you'll follow him in gospel obedience and in the transformed life because this day Jesus passed by. Come
In the same day Jesus passed by a man who was poor and a man who was rich. It matters not what your station in life may be. It matters not what background you come from. The Lord Jesus is interested in you. And He has passed your way. He is passing your way. What will you do with Him? What will you do with that precious opportunity? And if today something is stirred within you to want to investigate the claims of Christ and the truth of His Word and want to know what to do to be saved and how to live for Jesus, we'd love to help you in that search by turning to the Scriptures and seeking the answers to those questions. If you'd like a transcript of today's lesson, we'll be happy to send that to you. It's free of cost or obligation. Ask, for, ask us for the lesson, Jesus Passed By, and we'll get that printed copy on its way. No charge, and we hope to hear from you. You can find us online, ltbstv.org, and always we're online at, uh, on the various social media platforms. Be sure to like our Facebook page, subscribe to us on YouTube, and we, of course, have a podcast you can subscribe to and listen to us whenever you'd like. The uh, name of the podcast and also the social media platforms, just search for Let the Bible Speak TV. Thank you for joining me today for Let the Bible Speak. Have a great week ahead, and if it be God's will, I'll plan to meet you back here next time for another Bible study. Have someone else join us too, won't you? And make your plans to join me back here next time. Until then, may God bless you and have a great week. Let the Bible Speak is brought to you by The Church of Christ. For more information, including our past broadcast and sermon transcripts, visit ltbstv.org. Thanks for being with us today. Join us next time for Let the Bible Speak.